Cuttlefish are the disco parties of the sea, but not the kind of party you'd ever want to attend. You know, because of all the death. Hi, I'm Danielle Jufo, and you're watching Animal Logic. Despite what their name might have you believe, cuttlefish are cephalopods, not fish, making them cousins to the octopus and the squid. They get their name from a unique internal shell they possess, which is called the cuddle bone. It's a porous structure made of aragonite, which they use to control their buoyancy. The cuddle bone functions similarly to a rigid buoyancy tank containing a gas mixture, which allows the cuttlefish to become more or less dense than seawater. This gives the cuttlefish a huge advantage. The ability to be slightly more or less dense than seawater means that the cuttlefish can raise, lower, and maintain its position in the ocean with very little effort. Unlike other sea creatures, which may have to spend a great deal of energy to do the same thing. There are around 100 species of cuttlefish, and they vary in size, from 2.5 centimeters long to 90 centimeters long. Cuttlefish live primarily in warm, shallow waters and can be found along almost every coast in the world, except for the Americas. We don't know for sure why they are absent here, but the most likely explanation is that by the time the Cepiidae family had evolved, the warm, shallow water bridge between Africa and South America had been severed, and the only crossing point was in the northern rim of the Atlantic Basin, whose waters were too cold for the cuttlefish to survive in. Cuttlefish have eight arms and two long tentacles which they shoot out of their pouches to pull prey into their razor-sharp beaks, paralyzing them with a strong venom before swallowing them whole. Their arms and the larger tips of their tentacles are covered in suction discs, perfect for snagging prey. If they find themselves in a sticky situation, like many other cephalopods, cuttlefish can deploy ink in order to stun and disorient predators while they make a speedy escape. Cuttlefish are probably best known for their amazing color-changing abilities. Their skin is lined with chromatophores, which are these light-reflecting, elasticy ink sacs which can produce different pigments. This allows them to change their appearance instantly to match virtually any possible environment. They control these chromatophores with lines of muscles that contract or expand to create different pigments. We've described this process in a previous episode as like squeezing an ink-filled balloon. The harder you squeeze, the darker the color appears. They have roughly 200 chromatophores per square millimeter, making them much higher resolution than any television on the market. Cuttlefish are amazing at blending into their natural environment, with the ability to easily disguise themselves as sand, rock, or coral. But even cooler, when a cuttlefish is placed in man-made environments, they have even been observed camouflaging against a black and white checkered background. Now, despite all this color-changing mastery, cuttlefish are colorblind. Scientists are still unsure as to how they're able to match their colors to their environments, but they have a few strong theories. One of the most recent is that cuttlefish rapidly focus their eyes at different depths, using a property called chromatic blur. Basically, each color has its own wavelength, and when light enters their eyes, the different wavelengths will bend, causing them to blur, making it so the cuttlefish can identify what different colors are based on which sections are blurry. This is likely why their pupils resemble a drunken W shape, as that would increase the blurring of the different wavelengths. Other theories are that cuttlefish rely on a separate layer of cells called leucophores. These reflect white light, which is the combination of all colors. So in shallow water, the leucophores will appear white, but as the cuttlefish travels deeper into the ocean, the colors they reflect are darker and more complex. It's not just color though. They can completely change their texture and shape as well. This process utilizes those bands of muscles we mentioned earlier. When they need to change shape, they will contract their muscles, which will force the liquidy center of those muscles to the surface in little spikes, allowing them to take on a multitude of different shapes. Another mystery of cuttlefish camouflage is that they can do it in complete darkness. While their camouflage makes them amazing at hiding, they use their color changing for a lot more like disco fighting. When confronting another male, rather than physically attacking each other, instead, they light up, and whoever emits the most frightening pattern wins, usually a dark wavy pattern over bright stripes. Terrifying. 
Cuttlefish will also employ this strategy when hunting. They'll light up their bodies with a hypnotic light show to lure in prey, who are distracted by their amazing patterns, and then, when they're close enough, they'll shoot out their tentacles, grab their prey, and swallow them whole. Not only that, but sometimes males will pretend to be females. When a male cuttlefish is courting a female, he will display female patterns on the side facing away from her. This is to deter rival males, tricking them into thinking that it's just two females hanging out, and not a male moving in on his territory. The cuttlefish mate by the male grabbing the female face to face and inserting his spermatophores into a sac just below the mouth with his special tentacle. When the mating routine is successful, which happens in the spring, the female will lay several hundred eggs over the course of a few days, shortly after which she dies. Two months later, the eggs will hatch, and out come hundreds of mini cuttlefish. There's no real immature stage for cuttlefish, and they just hatch as miniature versions of the adults. But possibly the most interesting thing about cuttlefish is that they can count. In a study conducted at Taiwan's National Tsinghua University, 54 one-month-old cuttlefish were presented with two separate boxes. The first contained one shrimp, and the second contained five. In every single test, the cuttlefish would reliably pick the larger number of shrimp. While it might be easy for them to tell the difference between one shrimp and five, they were also capable of distinguishing between closer numbers, like three and four, always picking the larger meal. In order to rule out that the cuttlefish were just choosing the denser group, the scientists crowded the smaller number of shrimp into a confined space and gave the larger group more room to move around. Even in this scenario, the cuttlefish were able to figure out which group was larger by actually counting them. The ability to choose three shrimp over two shrimp is an amazing ability for a cuttlefish. While that level of math is certainly very easy for us, there is a lot of math that we find very difficult, and we shouldn't. This might be because it wasn't explained clearly to you, so it just feels like a jumble of memorized formulas without any understanding of the underlying concepts. So if you want to deeply understand math concepts, you should go and check out brilliant.org, who has sponsored this video, by the way. Their site makes math fun, but more importantly, it makes it accessible. Each problem provides a detailed and easy to understand breakdown of the solution, allowing you to understand where you went wrong or right and apply that knowledge to future problems. I've always wanted to be a little bit better at math. I find it immensely fascinating and it's so important to so many different disciplines. But to be honest, I've always struggled a little bit with it. I haven't used the higher concepts of math since, I guess, calculus in grade 12. I think this tool could actually help me connect with that a little bit again. So if you're like me and you're curious as can be about math, but you're maybe a little out of practice, I highly recommend it. The Algebra Through Puzzles course offers an enjoyable look into various puzzles that help you improve your understanding, intuition, and strategic thinking when it comes to algebra. That's so helpful. If you want to support Animal Logic and learn a little more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash animalogic and you can sign up for free. And also, the first 200 people who go to that link can get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So what animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week, right here. Thanks for watching.